Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 7, Genesis chapter 7 verse 12, and Lamentations chapter 5 verse 9. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for this word. Thank you for caring so much for us, your children, for calling us to, to your side and so close to you, Lord God, help us to stay with you. Help us to stay in love with you. Help us to stay near to you, our Father, God. Like a child clings to their parent, Lord God, help us to cling to your leg, to your side, Lord God. Keep us safe. Keep us close, Lord God, until we meet again, until we see you face to face, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, help us to stay under your wing of safety, Lord. We love you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, you guys. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7. For the for land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. All right. And so um, this is actually not speaking just, you know, of land. Um, even in its original context, um, this is speaking of people. Right. And so um, here, you know, the the rain is speaking of receiving understanding, receiving something that is helping the cultivation process to occur. Right. Um, that increase to occur. So in his context, this scripture is talking about um, the believer who has come to believe in God and come to know God and understand God and then falls away. How it's almost impossible for them to um, come back to God because then it would be almost as if bringing Jesus in contempt, um, having to re-crucify Jesus in their heart, right? And so um, he's saying those people who have come to this heavenly understanding this great wisdom and having all these you know revelations um to them and then they fall away and so um the thing that the lord was and then it was also talking about um how unuseful and unproductive it is if if that rain falls and you know um thorns and thistles are grown up it's it's useless right and so the thing Holy Spirit was showing me about this scripture um, is that um, it's useful when the wrath is poured out on the land. All right. And so it says for the land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. All right, and I'm just going to move to the next scripture and then it'll help us to understand what um, the Lord is saying. Genesis chapter 7, verse 12, and rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So when I saw that, I was like, Lord, this is something. Because the first one is talking about the rain and the second one is talking about the rain. All right, and so what happened in Genesis um, when that rain fell for 40 days and 40 nights, well, the rain came and flooded the land, right? It completely wiped out. It completely decimated the, the earth and it, it, it wiped it clean, right? It, it completely destroyed the inhabitants. It completely cleansed the earth and it allowed um, new newness to spring forth, right? New lineages of animals, new um, new lineages of people, right? To begin again, right? A, a restart. And so um, that's what the land, the water came. That's what 40 means. 40 means pure, 
um, holiness when you're seeing looking at the Strong's Concordance. Um, so this land, this wrath that came purified the land, right? And we know that God is not going to bring that type of wrath again, where He just completely wipes out all of the whole earth. Well, when this wrath that is to come is going to be poured out on the earth, um, it's going to be for the good, right? It's going to be for the good. It's going to be the way that he is making for people, right? How could that be? How could the wrath cause um, something good to occur? Well, it says for the land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. So when God is pouring out wrath on the land, he's trying to get the people to do something, right? He's trying to get the people to come under check. Right, He's trying to get the people to acknowledge the true and living God. He's trying to get the people to repent. He's trying to get the people to relent. He's trying to get them to his side. He's trying to turn them back to him. So in the same way that land, um, when it receives rain, is cultivated and then it brings forth fruitfulness when water or wrath is poured on a people it can cause them to become productive right how well it forces them to look at themselves it forces them to produce something right whether it be thorns and thistles or it be fruitfulness it's going to produce something, right? Whatever the seed that is in there is going to begin to germinate, right? Why? Water and pressure and heat will produce something. Some of those seeds are going to pop, right? Something's going to boil. That's what a seed is doing when it's germinating. It's taking the water in, it's boiling it, and it's basically forcing out the plant, Right. And so here um, God is letting us know that this wrath that is going to be poured out, many people will produce thorns and thistles. But for those who um, who have received something inside of themselves, those who come to believe um, on Christ, they're going to be productive in some way, shape or form. God is going to produce a crop in them some way, shape or form. Right. Just like um, I don't know if you guys remember the dream that I had had about the Antichrist and how there was this woman soldier and she was a higher ranking soldier and she basically gave up her life for the other people. And this was such a vivid dream and how these two soldiers were running from this Antichrist person and she ran out and, and the antichrist was going to kill these two people and she ran out and she sacrificed herself and the two other men were able to get on the truck and leave and she was she took the full brunt of the force um against herself in this dream and it was because she laid down her life, right? So she had become productive. She had caused a crop to come forth in herself, right? She had used herself and had been cultivated. Her mindset had been changed. She had been willing to lay down her life. And because of that, fruitfulness had been produced, how was it fruitful? Well, those two men who left now that they they had they had survived that thing and they had saw someone who had sacrificed themselves. We don't know what happened to them, right? In that dream, I don't know what happened to those men. But in in a hypothetical situation, when you when someone lays down their life for you, you begin to open your eyes, right? You, you begin to kind of reevaluate yourself. This is just like what Christ did for us. He took the full brunt and the full force of all of the evil and of death. And it helped our eyes 
to be open to the light, right? It helped us to see that someone cares for me. Someone loves me. What's going on here? It makes you question what in my life is going on. When that wrath is being poured out on the earth in the tribulation, it's going to cause some people's eyes to be opened, right? They're going to see people being martyred. They're going to see people giving up their life for something that they believe in. They're going to see people who are willing to take the mark and go ahead and give in. And they're going to realize the shallowness or the depth in which the seed has been planted, right? And so they're going to say, well, who am I? Right. Am I a person who's going to give in and get that mark or am I a person who believes on Christ? Do I believe who what what is this that's going on? So the wrath can cause something to be produced. Right. Whether it be thorns and thistles, thorns and thistles have to grow, too right? They have to have water. They have to germinate. But in the end, they're useful, unuseful and they're going to be burned. But when you produce a crop, even under great pressure, stress, strain, wrath, great waters being poured out, it's still going to be useful for God, right? And so we want um, those who are in the tribulation to produce Right? Even at the cost of their life, they are going to produce. It says, for the land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. So even if that rain doesn't feel like a blessing, even if that rain feels like you're drowning, God is doing it so that you can produce, produce the right fruit, right? We want the people who are in tribulation to produce the right fruit because that is their hope. That's their only way to get to God. That's their only way to get into heaven This is the manual cleansing of the garment. Amen. All right. And it says, and rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So God is letting us know that this rain, this wrath is soon to come, right? This rain, this thing which produces the bread that needs to be um, in order to be productive is soon to come. So they're going to eat the eat the bread of this, this wrath, right? They're going to produce this, this fruitfulness and this gain. And so it is going to come from God. God is allowing this to happen. All right. Lamentations chapter five, verse nine is the third verse that the Lord gave me. We get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness, Wow, look at God with this scripture, right? And so, you know, this is actually speaking of the children of Israel when they were coming um, under attack and they they had been decimated, right? They're, they were vulnerable. Um, the Assyrians and the Egyptians were after them. And so, you know, many people have been taken into bondage and these are the the remnants, right? And so they are always at risk, right? At the behest of their life, right? At any time they went to do anything outside, they could be killed, right? They could be completely decimated. That's why the book is called Lamentations and Sorrows and Sadness is Mourning, Right. And so it says we get our bread at the peril of our lives. So they would have to go to the granary and grind meal and they would be vulnerable to being attacked and kidnapped or their children would be and um, they will be killed, raped. It says they will, they will their child, their daughters would be raped. And so this is speaking of the wrath, right? This is speaking of the risk of their lives and everything that they did. And even to eat, they were risking their lives to even eat, right? And so here, this is speaking of the people and the lifestyle that they will live, 
right? In the tribulation, it says we get our bread at the peril of our lives. So this production, this fruitfulness, this is what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, this fruitfulness, this ability to produce this bread, right? The growth of the crop, the splitting of the seed, the rain on the soil, all of these things are at the risk of their lives. Their lives are going to constantly be in at risk, right? But guess what? It's God who is watering this thing. It is God who is who is putting this pressure on. It is God who is allowing this this peril of their lives. Yes, it's the world of the Antichrist at that time, but God is allowing it for the production of fruitfulness. God is wanting them to be fruitful. He is wanting them to produce for him so that they can come and be with him. This is the way that he has made for them. Even those who are in tribulation, right? It says we get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. So there's going to be a great sword that is against them. And there, the, the place of their living is considered the wilderness. Why? Because it is outside of the civilized way of doing things, right? It is outside of that, that natural, um, order that came, which was through grace. So this is the wilderness. This is those who have been pushed out of the banquet, those who are outside in the area of desolation, right? They are not experiencing those good things that could have come um, from from listening and abiding in Christ during the time um, where it was allowed without that heart harsh penalty, right? Remember, Christ already paid this harsh penalty. Christ was refined as silver is refined, right? In the fire seven times, right? And so Christ was put in that fire. He he went under that harsh penalty. And as the bride now, we don't have to do that. The wise bride does not have to come under that harsh penalty. She is under grace, right? And the sacrifice that she lived, the submersion of the death of Christ that she lived is a daily sacrifice. It is in the furnace of affliction, not as, as silver, right? So Christ did the silver um, sacrifice. We are in the furnace of affliction of our daily lives and suffering in our daily lives, right? If you suffer with Christ, you will reign with him. And so we are in that reigning process during this time, but these people here are in peril. Why? Because they have refused the grace right? They have refused it during the time of grace. And so this, this bread that they are producing is God's will. It's a way that he made for them so that they could come into the kingdom as well and serve him. And so it says, we get our peril, that we get our bread at the peril of our lives. So it is their own life sacrifice that they are having to, to do. This is the silver refinement. This is the harshness. Remember, the silver was put into the fire seven times. That represents the seven years of tribulation. It says we get our our bread at the peril of our life. They will produce, right? They will, they will be productive. Some of them will, right? But it will be at, at the risk of their lives. It says we get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. God is causing a great sword to be in the wilderness. It is his will. It is his will and it is soon to come. How do we know it's soon to come? Because of this Genesis 7, 12 scripture and rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. It's letting us know that that time is nigh, right? That purification process is nigh. If you are with him now, you can, you can, you can be saved. You can come under this great grace, right? You can come into the ark of safety now. You don't have to do it at the peril of your life. Be saved. Walk with Christ. Abide in him. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for making a way for us under this great grace. We thank you for Jesus. 
We thank you for abiding in him, holding close to his side. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Father God. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We know that we soon fly away, Jesus. We thank you, God, for producing in us before the wrath, Lord God. Help the people here to produce the bread and be cultivated, Lord God. Lord Jesus, help them not to produce the thorns and the thistles, Lord Jesus. Have your way in them, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.